Peace. They judge you before your eyes even open. Off the jump, they come and play your throat before words are even spoken. I just touched down in Southampton. They say y'all get things in motion. Let me tell you, they fear your dedication. They fear your devotion. They love to hate your skin tone, treat you like an immigrant, but you've been home. Bronze like the pennies the brother ain't on. Envy is the drug that they own. Every breath is a hit. Cause we're striking like the ancient Egyptians. They clone our people are beautiful down to the bone, down to the soul. Control is the goal. We in the city of God, cause the slums is all they want us to know. And they think we ain't know. Thought you was just street smart. Can't understand how you come up with this street art. 57 years of being married to one man. I tell you what, we didn't really know each other until after we got married. If I had to think of two artists who are the most involved, the two names that would come to mind would be Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee one of the most respected couples in that most unstable industry, show business, have done it all, and without the typical compromises made of some performers of color. The inordinate power of their talent set a pace for the rest of us. My films were elevated because of the presence of Ruby Dee and Ozzie Davis. And it's an amazing story. Ozzie and Ruby have been at the, at the center of American life for so long and accomplished so much, so much, so much. They didn't just create and say, I'm an artist, I had nothing to do with that. They dealt with the events of their time. Both Ruby and Ozzy saw their life as much larger than themselves. People need to get to see them and to know them as, as we've all known them over the years. Special live coverage of Remembering Ozzy, the funeral for Ozzy Davis. Too quickly, we are losing too many of our legends. Her poetry her prose, her life, investigates, demands a progressive way of looking at ourselves and the world, demands that we respect our differences, acknowledge our similarities. She's feisty. You know, of course, she is a genteel lady and sophisticated as, as any, but uh, she brings it right on down to the common denominator. You, woman, sister, wife, actor, mother, grandmother, activist, professor, poet, philosopher, genius. If I'm going to die, I just don't want to die because I'm old. <laughs> when I die, I'm going to take some of this. I want to finish some of it. Ruby Dee, someone who believed and committed and loved more than anything the craft that she did, but didn't separate it from her life. And that's the difference between living and not living. Mucha, first of all, we're so grateful to have the pleasure of film, uh, showing this film. And um, we're really hoping that people will get a hold of this, mm -hmm. help support you financially. And that's my main purpose. But what was, um, what was your main purpose as well of doing the movie? You know, you've been asked this many, many times, but for the camera, you know, what was your main purpose of doing this film? Well, I wanted to capture the exchange that a lot of times we miss. You know, when I lost, when Grandpa passed away in 2005, I missed the opportunity mm. to deliberately sit down with him 
and talk about the rich lessons he's learned mm -hmm. in life, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when people pass, so much goes with them, especially with a giant like him. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to repeat that mistake. Mm -hmm. So the purpose in doing this documentary in this way was to make sure that I sat down with my grandmother while I could, while she could, and, and capture all of the wealth, as much of the wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. as she gathered mm -hmm. in her life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, capture that exchange and that exchange alone has inspired people but we talked mm -hmm. in particular about three essentials like essentials yes, in yes, life yes. and those essentials are uh, love art and activism they had a marriage for over 56 years Hollywood marriage mm -hmm. they always decided to they sacrificed checks to stay committed to socially conscious art yes. and they were always uh, since the 50s and before the 50s involved in activism mm -hmm. local and national mm -hmm. activism and I knew uh, you know if people are flying in to speak with my grandmother about their personal lives right. and I'm going about my life as if I don't have a gem right. <laughs> as a grandmother yeah. Yeah. I'm being yeah. a fool so I need to right. sit there and right. speak with her that's right. why we right. did it yeah. you know I, I, I saw something happening to you during that movie though mm -hmm. it, it was personal and, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's so unique that you brought that out you were asking her questions because you needed answers for things. Yes, yes. And and how did you go about doing that? Just for well, I, I had to do what a deep dive. What made you do that? I mean, what drove you to that place? Well, I, you know, honestly, I, I had those questions. I had questions of, you know, uh, I started this project, I think I was 31 or 32, and I was having questions about marriage because that's a time mm -hmm. where if you're not married, you might be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. But as a young man, I'm surrounded by people who some are married, some aren't. And I see a lot of marriages fall apart. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to dive into something ill-prepared. So if you're talking, if you have a chance to sit and talk with someone who's had a 56 plus year marriage, That's you true. might as well. So, but I had to dive deep to figure out why am I having such trouble with it? Mm. And the questions I had about commitment and maybe greed and sex and everything like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. it showed me what really might be fueling my hesitation yeah, when it comes yeah, to marriage yeah. and I was like oh, okay that's a interesting thing to learn about myself but mm -hmm. I got some advice about it through her and through some of grandpa's recordings so that's great. taking that deep dive and taking that risk by bringing it up with her mm -hmm. paid off I think the movie did something to me I was during a time where I've been advocating for an ex-slave house here mm -hmm. in Southampton okay. and during the time when I saw you on here and now that's, okay, that yeah. was the beginning of why nice, we got yeah. this film. Yeah, that was fun. And I said, I have to have this, you know, we got to get a hold of this film. And then when I got a hold of the film, I was going through so much during that time. I was, you know, you got, when you're an advocate and you're on the front line, mm -hmm. you sometimes you get so burnt out. But when I saw that film, it's like I got this burst of energy. Ah. I really did, seriously. That's because awesome. I said, Ruby D, I yeah. mean, she's Miss Advocate, you know? And yeah. how much did. So you're saying you saw all this advocacy, but, but it wasn't until you did the film, you seemed like you, you kind of got, kind of caught you at that point. Well, the thing is, I didn't see it all. Mm. I, I saw, she's my grandma, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. Graham Ruby. So, right. of course, I'm not ignorant to uh, who she is on a, maybe on a high level. Mm -hmm. But when it comes deep down to act, I've never saw a lot of that footage, like her mm. on the streets yelling the names of the people who oh, got killed. I've never okay. seen that until we did this project. Okay. And I was like... This is real, real, mm. real. And I never saw those FBI files. And I, and I never saw, I mean, there's a huge archive that I hadn't explored. I really hadn't. So all of that was new to me. And I was tremendously changed by it. I'm so happy that other people are touched by it, too. Tremendously, but, tremendously. Yeah. I think it was kind of um, a twist, too, when you brought out about them being on the FBI list. Oh, yeah. People didn't, ex you didn't expect that. No. Though, huh? Yeah, I, I didn't we did expect not. Yeah. We did not. So... And that's kind of that's kind of you know, that's a serious thing. Yeah, because it shows me not that they were dangerous, but that the FBI must have thought that they were dangerous. But you, when you see them and know them and know that their intentions are just to help people, then why are people who are helping people on FBI list like why is that a dangerous thing to do? Shouldn't they spend their time following other people? But <laughs> it was it was, <laughs> yeah, it was right? kind of scary. But but it didn't reality. stop her. No, no, because and then Grandpa says in the doc that part of his list, he was he was had eyes on him because of his close association with Grandpa. Exactly, Ruby. exactly. Because so when you were showing it, her name kept coming up, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she was the target. Yep, it's amazing. Because it was her family who was the connection to Malcolm X, also. You know, so really, how so? Because her brother 
Tommy mm -hmm. uh, converted to Islam mm -hmm. and was at um, Temple Number no. Seven with Malcolm X and was a friend. He he, he would drive around with Malcolm to oh, okay. different speaking engagements, etc. And uh, was, he's the one who made the connections. And, and he said, oh, Ruby, you got to meet this Malcolm. You got to okay. meet Malcolm. You got to okay. meet Malcolm. Awesome. And he made the introduction. And they they vetted Malcolm <laughs> because you never know who people are. And they, they ended up res like seeing how much of a brilliant soul he was. And um, so she, she was deep into helping people. And I think you brought out, too, I think her mom yes. was that way. So I think that has a lot to do with, too, when you brought up in that environment. You know, you're, and we say this saying goes, you're part of your environment. Right. So it seemed like her, her mom was... Um, right, her mother, and she always, in our interview, she always, no matter what, veered off to something her mother taught her. Really? So it is so clear that her mm. mother had a huge impact mm -hmm. on who she was. And her mother was very active in Harlem. Her mother was always taking her to rallies. That's why she said she was had picket signs at, before. Like as soon as she could walk, she had a picket sign. <laughs> and she, her mother would take care of the women in the community who were um, raising children by themselves. So she'd always be babysitting or giving them a place to stay in the corner there. You know. So her mother was involved and cared for a lot of people. So and what was her mother's name? The full name? Emma. Em it was Emma. Emma Emilia Benson, but then she's a Wallace. So Emma Wallace. Well, see, that's why I can relate so much because I, I still do that. Yeah. Single women, men, really? men yes, that's wow. what I do, you know, besides yeah. whatever else I do. Mm -hmm. But you, I want to thank you again for coming, and I want you to let people know how okay. they can send, open up their paychecks, <laughs> open up their paycheck, not their paycheck, open up their checkbooks and send you something. So if you well, can if make a donation, and you can make a tax. Uh, deductible donation too. Uh, go to rubydstory.com and you'll find all the information you need. Uh, rubydstory.com and you can make a charitable donation and you can um, help us make this last little step and be a part of this project. So everyone, we've had a huge Kickstarter following. We got our mm -hmm. money, uh, our seed money from them. A lot of celebrities you see, once they saw where we were going mm -hmm. with it, they mm -hmm. fell in love with it oh, and helped good. us take good. the next few steps. And it's been, this has been such a community driven mm -hmm. piece on the back end mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I think the Grandpa and Grand Ruby would really, really be happy about it. So definitely go to rubydstory.com and you'll see the uh, donation area. You can find out some more details about it. And I thank you in advance. Thank you. Well, thank you. So it's a lot of good stuff, and we need your support, so I thank you for coming.